Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Hello. We are going to talk about career transition and this is a topic that personally I really like. I mean professionally too. I also deal with a lot of clients who are going through the career transition process, but myself, I really identify with the the career transition topic because I have done that myself many times, you know, in my personal life I have been through career transitions in plural, I would say, in different moments of my life, in different situations. So uh, it is something that is very close to me, you know, as a person and as a professional also, because a lot of my clients, they are going through career transition process. So I really like this topic. And my guest, Carolina, she's a specialist on it. So it's going to be a really interesting conversation. She's going to share her expertise, her input about it. And I think we definitely don't talk enough about career transition. This is a topic that some of us are still hesitating. We feel uh, ashamed of talking about it. We don't feel supported sometimes in our families, in our, in our surroundings. Um, not everybody has been through this process. So sometimes people try to help us, but at the end, they don't help. They just make things worse. And then we feel bad. We feel doubtful. We feel insecure in the process. So I know there is a lot of feelings around the career transition process. And that's why we are going to talk about it more openly more you know in a clear way in a sincere way there Hello. she is oh, you. <laughs> thank you how so are you much. very good so do you want to introduce yourself for people that still doesn't know you mm -hmm. and they are gonna sure. fall in love with you right now so please go ahead today we will be talking about career transition it's also a very special topic for me i am working with helping people through this moment of career transition but myself i also have been going through some periods of time of career transition and so currently i work as a psychologist and also life coach and career coach but uh previously Before this career change, I was working in the recruitment field and also learning and development uh, where I worked in Ireland and also in Brazil. So I kind of shift my, my experience from the corporate environment to now 100% human development. So I work with my clients through all the challenges that they have, either if it's in the life, life field, let's say, and also career, which is kind of funny, Ju, because I think life and career, they are both connected. It's almost impossible to talk about career without talking I agree. about life. So that's it's kind like of that. my... Yeah. Exactly. And, and sometimes we don't consider that. And that makes a lot of pain inside us because those things are actually the same, like they are together. And that's yeah. what I, I try to work through with my clients nowadays. So that's what yeah. I do. Nice. We have so many things in common. Uh, like we are both psychologists. We both came okay. from corporate jobs working as a recruiter. We are both now working as career, uh, career coach, career consultant, whatever. We also deal with career. We faced career transitions in ourselves right when we went moving abroad and, and in brazil and in ireland and so we lived in the same True. countries we have been through transitions so it's very nice yeah we have definitely a lot of things in common cool. yeah the thing about career transition is that uh, what i notice is that it's still a kind of taboo you know not everybody talk enough about it openly about it mm -hmm. and i think it's because our generation we that are between 30, 40, you know, we are the first generation that actually can um, dream about having different jobs and talk about being fulfilled with what we do as a career. And we are more or less okay with changing in our uh, career path. Because, for example, both of my parents, they work for the, they are retired now, but they work for the government. So they spend their whole life in the same job. And all their friends or people in that generation and in the previous generations, they were also mm -hmm. uh, having a very stable career path. So changing jobs, it was not even an option. It, it was not exactly. possible. It was not in their that mind. So, I th yeah, I think that's why it is still a taboo talking about career transition, mm. but what is your experience and your opinion about it? Why is it so hard to talk about it, to consider why it brings so much suffering to us? What is the reason for that? Yeah, I'm going to share you, with you like my point of view because I also have a kind of holistic uh, view of everything. That's kind of my, I try to bring this view as well to my job, to my work and everything and the job that I do with my clients. So, I agree with you. I think past generations, um, our father, mother, and even grand, 
you know, people that came before us, they had a very kind of um, tough way to see life. Things were different. Now yeah. we do have more opportunity. However, it's kind, it's kind of like we are still connected with all the fear of our yeah. past generations, you know, the fear, the insecurity. It's the very fear close of failing. to us, right? Exactly. It's still very close, yeah. Yeah, because like if we consider reality now, we do have a lot of options. We have opportunities, we have options, and we are free. But no one actually taught us how to be free. And everything that we learned from our parents, it's actually the opposite. It's like, hey, follow this path. This is the safe way to do it. And I think that the reason why, at least in my opinion, it's so hard to talk about it and the reason why we don't talk about it as much is just because of fear and insecurity and um, also the desire of belonging. So sometimes we are afraid of trying something new because we just want to be part of the, the majority, you know, the yeah. social the, the social world, let's say, the people who are around us. However, we don't realize that this actually creates a lot of pain as well. So it's hard to belong, but it's also hard to not belong and just kind of don't. I mean, it's hard to belong, but it's um, it's also hard to not belong, but it's also hard to not actually listen to our desire. So, yeah. I mean, we do have the options to, to choose something else, but we have fear, insecurity, and also limited beliefs that comes to uh, from our kind of ancestral, you know, yeah. parents and grandmother and grandfather. But it's absolutely possible to change all of that. But we need to make a decision. <laughs> what is the path that we want to go through? We want to continue repeat, like continue to repeat uh, what our parents and grandparents and um, have gone through, or we want to mm -hmm. create a different, different choices and different kind of way of living. Which is, yeah. I believe, is there, it's a great opportunity to do it now, uh, <laughs> not later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the fears, and you mentioned that already. So um, when someone decides working with you, um, do you notice any pattern, like something that repeats more, the, the kind of fears? Okay, they, they have fears, but fear of what? What are they afraid? Which are the main struggles that mm -hmm. most of people... Every case is different, definitely. But let's say most of yeah. people that are going through the career transition process, which are the most common fears and struggles that they are facing? Mm -hmm. I would say, you'd like based on my in, in you know experience, um, exactly as you said, it's important to consider that every client and every patient, every person has a different background and also different yes. values. The values are the kind of pillars of our choices. Like if we go to A or B path, it's related to what is what it is important to us. So the first thing that I would do is to understand for that client, for that person, what it is the values, what are the most important values. But usually it is the fear of uh, not having the security which is an illusion because what it is security at the end of the day. We sometimes <laughs> want to be in a certain company thinking that, oh, this is the security that I need. This is the career that is going to give me the security. And then next day we're fired. And yeah. then you realize, oh, I actually didn't, I didn't uh, feed my dream because I thought here was the security. And then we realize that is no such a thing. Mm -hmm. But I would say this is the kind of root um, of, of majority of fears is the, the, the desire of security, security, which create fears like everything that we do. If we don't find the security there, it's going to make us like I'm not going to do it because, you know, maybe I'm not going to have the security that I need. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where usually I try to work with them as well, because, you know, at the end of the day, what is security? Really, when you talk about security, are you talking about money, like financial security, mm -hmm. or something yes. that has a status that people value, like a kind of job or company or profession that people value, or don't have to go through a career change because it can be stressful. So it's like it's better this than have to face <laughs> all the change again, or it can be a mix of all kinds of security that people are looking for. Hey, I would say it's actually uh, all of that. Security, it's very good pointed you because I think security is it's a um, combination of all those things and uh, for sure for some people some specific thing might be more important than the other but usually based on my experience money it's a big thing mm. you know or if I don't follow my if I follow my dream who's gonna pay my my bills you know what's gonna happen with me and uh 
uh, but it's it, so this is hard, the right? Things. I have heard it <laughs> so many times, like my clients, like deep inside, I know what I want to do, but I won't get yeah. paid enough. But my family never supported me, but I, I was not allowed to do this, uh, the university course to follow this path. Now I'm too, late, too old for that because it's going to take four years. Whatever. So that's such a yeah. common thing. And people carry that for years. Like maybe, you're, you know, right. you have been working in a job, in a profession that you don't like for 10, 15 years, but you still talk, if it's a safe environment, obviously, you still talk about, you know what, but my dream was to, be a veterinarian or whatever, be an artist. And I haven't fulfilled that. And it's still something that is like hurting, you know, like painful to you yeah, years after. So that's like a hard stuff to, to carry, right? It's not yeah. easy. And I'm going to be, yeah, I'm going to be a hundred percent honest with you, because I had this pain myself as well. You know, like yeah. my 15 years of a corporate environment in recruitment and training, um, I, act, I, I do think that I stayed there longer than I wanted because I was really kind of trying to understand how I could build that security that I had in that, in that scenario. How can I mm -hmm. have this and also do something different? And I, I, I have gone through a few things to understand that what I was looking for was actually within me, not outside me. This kind of a feeling of, uh, of getting enough money and having a routine. We can build all of that. You know, if we actually have a strategy, of course, not just mm -hmm. leaving where we are and, you know, quitting the job and starting something new from one day to the other. But it is possible to do this transition as smooth mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah. Even though we have fears. So just to say, guys, it's normal also to have fears. <laughs> that is no problem. We can just look at it and see, okay, how, what can I do to maybe make it um maybe More less smooth. strong like yeah exactly less smoother stressful. than it is you know and yeah. less stressful as well it is a strategy it is like step by step it is maybe planning uh long term not doing this right now so mm -hmm. i actually you know have done my my transition my career transition is slowly because i had this value very strong very high as well mm -hmm. the security it was a very strong um high value for me I but totally connect with you. Yeah, I totally connect with you. Like I was also working for 15 years as a recruiter, and then I decided to uh, to travel more. That was my main uh, my main goal. And then I was for like a year and a half doing this transition, testing out uh, you know new business model, collaborating with people, and uh, trying some other incomes. And so I took like a year and a half to do this That's by it. working super hard and the fear was there it was not because yeah. we are psychologists because we help people in doing their career transition that when it, it happened to us we won't feel fear That's i think the fear will always be there but fear serves to protect us like if you we are not afraid of the fire we're going to get burned so we see fire, we're like, okay, I need to keep a certain distance, whatever, I want to go with plastic, I want to go with alcohol, because I know it, it opens up our mind to be more alert to mm -hmm. that, but it, it helps us to protect ourselves. So fear is not a bad thing. And in career transition, I think it's almost impossible to face it, to go through the process without any kind of fear at any point. It's like, that's not human. It's not yeah. human, right? I <laughs> Exactly. I totally agree. And I think this kind of very honest approach is to share with you guys who are watching us that we have done it. We, f we felt it and it's going to be there. It's part yeah. of life and that's okay. You know, it's fine. We don't need to give up on our dreams, let's say, or mm -hmm. even a career transition just because that is the fear, fear is over there. there. Yeah. Fear will let's always be there. This. Yeah. Exactly. How do you deal with that? What do you do with that's, your fear? That's the thing. Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. Do you believe it's possible to make money from anything as long as you track a goal for that? I'm going to give my personal opinion. Um, I see money as a kind of an energy. And as a result, it is possible to create money from everything. As long as you are really connected to what you are doing and you actually bring your own values to this. You know, you are, uh, you have the intentions, you, you set the intentions uh, on how much you want to get and what you want to give back to the universe. The kind of, that is a law of the universe working um, for us and with us. So if you actually have very clear what you want and you have, of course, as well, an idea, okay, what do you want to sell, how to sell and a little bit of There's strategy a over there. Yeah, it's strategy. Is it? Yeah. Not, it's not a magic. It's not like it can be, it can have a, 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 um, a kind of a, 
an, an energy, let's say, you know, in my point of view, but it's not magic. It's just a kind of uh, intention over there. So, of course, that is that you must be clear about what you want to sell, how you want to sell, who you want to talk to, and a little bit of planning as well. But I do believe, and the, the proof of it is just to look around. Like, we have people selling everything, and we have actually demand for everything, you yeah. know? So, why not? Like, we yeah. see this all over the world, like everywhere. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because, um, like, if I need to buy pen, that are that is there are a lot of people that would be buy, uh, would be selling that for me. If I need paper, I have someone who can sell that to me, and and everything, everything. And yeah. especially, I would say, if you put yourself over there, that's your power. Like, you can definitely make it happen. Whatever yeah. it is that you want to or you want to make in life. Yeah, That's and when you do, yeah, when you sell something, when you provide your service, when you uh, offer something, um, the passion that you feel about it, the, the, uh, how important that thing is for you, it matters because that's what makes us choose working with one professional or with the other. Buy one kind of pen or the other. Buy a cake in that shop or in that other shop because at the end of the day, it's a cake. It's a pen to write. It's a notebook. It's a paper. But we uh, feel something special for one brand for one person, for one professional, you know, when it's about the product, it's connected to the the, um, the brand itself, right? If we trust that brand, if we have the uh, good experience with that, when I talk about professional, it's directly the feeling that you have with that person. So if you put passion, if you put um, a good energy, if you are a good professional, because it's not only, oh, I love what I do, but I'm terrible. I don't have the skills. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being... Let's consider that you are a good professional. I want to take it from there, yeah. okay? Because it's, it's oh, I would love to be a pilot. Uh, okay, do you have a drive license? Or, no, I don't, but I would like, okay, so it's not about dreaming. It's, I'm not talking sure. about it. You have all the qualification, you have experience. So now you're changing into making money out of that. So in this case, the passion, mm -hmm. the motivation, the quality, of, because it's all connected. Like if you really enjoy what you do, it's going to show in the good results that you have. So yeah. yeah. At yeah. some point, people totally will agree. pay you for that. So yeah. it might take longer or not, but there is high chance True. that it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. The only thing that I, um, just to complement and also try to bring back to the, the question, uh, Guy's question is, I think it's possible to sell everything, but you also must be responsible about it. It's not an um, unresponsible, unresponsible um, action of selling anything for, ev for whatever. It's, again, that intention and that planning and everything that Ju said, like, oh, I'm going to be a pilot, but I, I, I don't know how to drive. I don't know how, to, <laughs> how does that work. You know, you can put yeah. lives in, in danger risk. and yeah. a lot of things in risk. So it wouldn't work this way. And it's the same about selling something. It's important to know why you want to sell it, for who, how yeah. to how the matter the manner how you do it and everything but uh, yeah. it is possible yeah that would be my possible. main answer yeah yeah i was thinking here that we both lived abroad we both lived in ireland i also lived in spain and then in other countries as a digital moment and all of that and i think the um moving to another country moving to a different country and starting mm -hmm. your career from zero is also a career transition right we can we can say that yeah, I would say yeah. it is definitely a way of, um, it's a career move. Yeah. We just don't know if, if the, what's the level of this career move. If it's a yeah. completely changing the career or if it's just like changing company and also culture. But I would mm -hmm. say definitely once you, once you move from one country to the other, you are going to have a career move as well. Like yeah. almost automatically. <laughs> In this case, uh, because I know a lot of people that are watching us, a lot of my clients, they are in, in the process of, you know, trying a new career in a different country or they are already mm -hmm. in the country they want to work, but they are uh, looking for their first job and all of that. So this moving into another country is something that is very close to my clients. So specifically mm -hmm. about that, do you have any tips about uh, how to make this process more successful starting a career in a new country any specific tips based on your experience and on your clients that you could share thank you thank you for this question Ju. because like i uh, just kind of bringing a little bit of my background my story as well because you you probably know more than a lot of people 
here so with us. us. <laughs> and I was, yeah, I was working in Brazil in, in the recruitment field and also training on, uh, when in 2014 I moved to Ireland and I wanted mainly to improve my English, then, you know, continue in the corporate environment and probably go come back to Brazil and continue my path here. But um, I realized that to improve my English, I needed to have an experience, uh, like a professional experience, because that would kind of move me faster and everything. So I built a plan, like how can I improve my English? And then I decided that would make a lot of sense to have this international experience. So I would say for you who are moving country or just going to somewhere different, I would say just have a very clear start to, to have the clarity about what you want before getting there. So you, mm -hmm. can, um, and you can have this decided before, okay, what do I want? Do I want to go there just to have an experience, like a live experience and then go back home? Or I really want to um, have an international experience in my career or I want to change my career in there because having this very clear will give you the opportunity to prepare and to have a plan because if it's if you only have an if you just want to have an experience like a live experience it's fine you just go and then you come back you improve exactly. your, the language and you come back but if you want more than this then you need to know what it is what it is that you want like do you want to continue in your career and the career that you had in in Brazil let's say or in your in your own country okay what do I want to to do to actually work in this career or in this field in that country do I need a visa how can mm -hmm. I get this visa do I need some sort of experience how do I get ex this experience can I get this before do I get it there how can I go who can I connect with and um, so all this planning thing will come once you know what it, what it is the kind of experience that you are looking for once you get there in that country and that's kind of this um, clarity that I had which helped me a lot because I knew what I wanted and I didn't lose my time I was yeah. very straightforward I learned the English I, I got an internship in my area of recruitment because I wanted to make sure if once I get in a company, I would be like comfortable, secure, and also with a good, good English to deliver what I needed. So I got, got an internship unpaid. And then from this internship, I could get um, an official job uh, in an international company. So yeah. English, okay. Experience, okay. That was my path. But step I knew as well what I needed. Step by yeah. step. So you can build your own steps step by step once you know what it is that you want once you get yeah. there. Well, this is 100% aligned with what I tell my clients. And I, it's like almost the exactly words. I say, you need to know what you want to do because sometimes it's about it the international experience. I want to live abroad. I want to know a different culture. I want to experience that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. You can go backpacking. You can uh, do an exchange That's program. It. You can go on holidays. Like, don't make your life more complicated. Go there and enjoy That's your time. Good. That's amazing. That's so good that you can afford That's it. You it. have the money to be there without work. If you have some savings, then you plan this exactly. strategy. No, I want to mm -hmm. go, and, but I need to make money since day one because I have no savings. So I'm gonna. So are you mm -hmm. flexible with the initial position that you're gonna get, or, or you just wanna? Work in one area. If it's only in one area, you should work more before. So you go with something that's already confirmed when you get there. But if you're open to whatever job I have, I just need to pay my bills and I don't really care. I still want the experience, but I need to work to make the money. That opens a wide variety of options for you and a different that's strategy. True. But some people, they are more picky about the, the job, the profession. And I think that's fine. I mean, it's great if you want to work in one area. Some people go even to one company. Like, I want to work in that company. That's the reason I've seen that. I'm moving countries because I want to work in the headquarters of that company. How cool is that? It's really amazing. But we are okay. narrowing down very much the options. So it's, it's true. Let's be frank. It's more complicated, mm -hmm. right? So you exactly. need to be very intentional and very specific mm -hmm. in your strategy. And probably you're going to need to put more time and more effort on it. There is nothing wrong with that. But just know that it's going to require more preparation, more adjustment. Yes, so. Thanks. But yeah. there are so many options. So like living abroad is something that actually is nothing because <laughs> there are a lot of things inside the living abroad 
that, experience. That's very true. Right? That is very yeah. true, Jo. And I would say as well, like I, I am a hundred percent aligned aligned with what you said just said. Like there are several options, and it's all about what is your preference once you move country. Um, but also, I would say try to be flexible with yourself. Try to have a plan A, B, and C because in that <laughs> yes. way you will make sure that you you can leave one thing, and if that doesn't work in the timeline that you want, you can leave something else, and then you can leave something else otherwise. So play, plan A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but of course that is not a problem if you are really specific about something. As you said, you just that mean that that just mean that you might take a little bit longer. To yeah, you get what you want, and that's fine too. That's yeah, okay. It's fine. Yeah, if this is what you want, it doesn't matter how long you're going to take. You're going to get it. It's a matter yeah. of time. Yeah. That's Considering true. that, like in in which cases people need professional help in the process, because I mean, not everybody needs a career coach. You know, some professional support. Not everybody. Uh, some people mm -hmm. need it. Some people don't need. Some people maybe they they go half of the process alone, and then at, at a certain point they were like, okay, no, now I think it's worth it to hire a professional to help me in the process. So I don't know. Is there any uh, sign that people should be more alert to identify if a professional help would be beneficial for them, or um, it should serve everybody? I don't know. How is your experience with that? I mean, you're kind of biased because you provide the service, but let's be very, <laughs> very like, to start sure. with, I don't think everybody needs that. And I, I always say like that, sure. for example, when people um, come and talk to me and they want to hire my service, I'm like, okay, so uh, where are you going to this country? So do you speak the language they speak there? Oh, my level is very basic. I barely can communicate. So I tell like that. Okay, so you take the money you're going to pay me. Don't pay me now. Go and improve your language level, when you have a, co a conversational level, you come back to me and we talk because I won't be able to help you much if your communication mm -hmm. skills in that future country are not very helpful. So I'm very clear about it. It's like, don't pay me now, pay me later, but now invest mm -hmm. on the basic thing. This is like communication is the basic. So if you speak very basic, the language level of the other country, I don't think you should invest in a career. That's my opinion. I don't think you should invest yeah. in a career transition, career coach, because um, whatever job you have, you won't be able to do the job interview properly. So it won't happen. It's a waste of time. Yeah. So that's being very sincere. Okay. That's how I see that. So yeah. now back to yeah. you. <laughs> Sure. I I do agree with you, Ju. I don't think I do not think that everyone needs help like in everything, like in any way. What I mean by that is not everyone needs a psychologist, not everyone needs a coach, not everyone needs need a consultant, not everyone needs a doctor. You only need one when you feel that you need, when you have a demand for it. So that's that's I, I am totally aligned with this. The only thing is that I, I also work with my clients when they don't know what they want because I work in the uh, psychological and emotional process as well. So I would say, when do you know then that you need some kind of help? Probably when you don't have the answers within you, like you don't know how to start. You don't know what you want. Like if you, okay. because when it comes to career transition, it's something very specific. We like you want to, um, in terms of, um, I want to change. I want to change my career, but like the clients that I get and the, the demand that I, I look after can be a lot of different kind of a career transition. One, it could be like, I want to change from one country to the other. Uh, um, the other one is like, I want to change my career from where I am to something different, or I want to change the corp from the corporate environment to entrepreneur. Um, you know, but a lot sometimes, of things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Many different sometimes. ways, right? Exactly. Everything, all, all of those things are career, career transition. And yeah. I think when it is a good way to ask for help is when you actually don't know what you want for your career. You don't have any idea like what to do, what to do next. Okay. Maybe, maybe you are like unhappy with where, where you are and what you are doing, but you don't know where to go or what to do. And I think this is a good moment where you could ask for help. Yeah. And maybe if you want to get there, maybe another scenario would be you really know what you want. You want a specific career transition, but uh, you don't know what you need to do to get there. Also, okay. you could ask for help. Or if you want to get there faster as well, like, okay, I know what I want. I know what to do, but I still think that sometimes I take too long to get there. 
maybe a professional could you could help you to get there faster mm -hmm. but um if none of those cases are your case you know what you want you are actually already putting in practice what it is and <laughs> you have you have a vision of when you are gonna get there then it's you could even watch videos or talk to people talk to some professionals but not necessarily get get into a process of a coach or a coaching or a psychotherapy or something like this yeah that's what i would say Ju, but definitely yeah. not everyone it's only when you feel like you need <laughs> yeah but that's very interesting because i have spoke to uh, the three kind of people that you mentioned already so some people that are like I'm not happy with my career right now, with my life. I'm not where I want to be. I don't feel I'm using my full potential. There is something missing, some spark. Like Mondays are terrible days. So, but I don't know what to do next. I just know I don't want this, but I don't know what comes next. Yeah. So that's one of the examples that you gave, right? Another example exactly. is, no, I, I have clarity about the next step in my career. I just don't know how to make the jump, the process, because mm. sometimes it's a long process. Sometimes it's not that long. It's just that you don't know. Sometimes it's actually very linear and very straightforward, but maybe sure. you don't know because you are a professional in that area. You don't know how things work to change from one area to the other. So that's also very common. I've spoke to many people uh, that mm -hmm. I know I, I want to get there. Is this even the company I want to work for, the, the position title, or I want to be one, an expert on it, I want to serve this kind of client, I just don't know how to get there from where I am, which is amazing, because at least you know your goal, that makes mm -hmm. things easier already, but there is a process, right, it's not a, exactly. a jump completely, and the third uh, kind that you said is like, I want to speed up the process. I want to make things faster. And that's very interesting because um, I was talking to a client and, and she said like, I have been watching several videos on YouTube and all of that. And at some point I felt like a, a Frankenstein because, you know, I was picking some, uh, some uh, like feedback from here, some recommendation from some tips. Oh, yeah. And at the end True. I got confused because every person, every professional has uh, its own methodology, methodology. way of doing things. Yes. So, yeah. So if you, you follow the path of like I don't know, you have your own methodology, whatever. So if I work with you as a client, you're going to take me from point A to point B following. First, we do this. Second, we do that. Third, we do that. But if I watch a video of you and you're talking about step three and I try to start by from step three, it, I'm missing step one and two and maybe I not even realize I'm doing that. And then I copy someone, another coach, which has a different approach and I will yeah. follow that path and I try to put it. So sometimes it feels very schizophrenic, actually. So... <laughs> that's another thing. When you work with one yeah. person, when you decide to, to pay someone, you at least are following yeah. one methodology that will have the beginning, the middle, yeah. and hopefully the end, and hopefully you're going to you know, achieve your goal. But yeah. Uh, yeah. if we go only online, everything is online, actually. So if you everything have time, you know, you don't need to pay anything. But um, at least follow someone that is more or less guiding you through the process, because otherwise it can yeah. be very... <laughs> yeah, first. no, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I'm aligned. I think, um, I think you said everything. Ju. It's really like this. Like we have a lot of professionals, like in every field, like a lot of psychologists, a lot of coaches, a lot, a lot of career consultants, and everyone has its own methodology. And it's exactly as a doctor. Like uh, you know, if you go to the doctor and you f you go with the same kind of a problem mm -hmm. to different doctors, you will hear different things. Exactly because. You know, and I think that the, the right answer is the answer that you have within. And that's why I created the, uh, the, the I, uh, my methodology is about reconnect and fly because sometimes you need to hear you. Like you need to understand what it is that you want, like mm -hmm. what it is important to you. But getting back to what we are saying here is exactly as I agree with you, Ju. Sometimes if you want to follow some specific coach or psychologist, try to follow one methodology because that will probably make more sense otherwise you yeah. might be confused and that's fine to compare different people different professionals but always look within you the right answer like okay i i read all those things or i watched all those movies but what i what do i think that makes sense to me mm -hmm. does like, it resonate is, with me yeah right? exactly yeah. does that respect my values do it do i think do i can i see myself doing it because you know, at the end of the day, it's your name, it's your CV, it's your career, it's your, it's your, it's your life, exactly. pretty much. It's your life, yeah. exactly. So that's, yeah. that's a, but yeah, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. Do you think that the age, like how old I am, has anything to do with making the career transition process easier 
or more difficult? So, for example, if I just graduated from the university, is it easier and better than if I have 10 years experience? If um, I, I change already twice areas in my career, is it going to be more difficult than if it is the first jump because they're going to think I'm too old or too young? So what is the, the, the influence, if there is any, of the age, how old I am in the mm -hmm. career uh, transition process. Cool. So getting back, Ju, to the concept of career transition, understanding that career transition can be a lot of things, right? Not only from one company to the other, but also from one field to the other, like from corporate to entrepreneur. Um, Vice versa. I would say also, right? You were an entrepreneur versa. and you want to go now to a corporate job. Yeah. That's uh, it. Like career transition yeah. can be a... It's any change or transition related to the career, the career piece of our life. I would say that the, the biggest challenge in this, the career transition, any kind of career transition is the decision. Mm. It's making the decision. Regardless of your age, I think the biggest challenge is the decision that you need to take about what you want. This, this, having this being said, I think it... Um, You know, it's not because you are older or you're younger that's going to be like a problem because you are younger to have a career transition now or a problem because you are older than, uh, you know, um, a young guy. And I don't think that age is a problem. I think the biggest thing is the decision, how you make this decision and how you support this decision. And, and what are these steps, how you're going to take the next steps Because you can have a very consistent and smooth career transition with 50s, like at your 50s or your 60s even sometimes, <laughs> you know. There is no right time to have a career transition. I don't think, I don't believe on that. I think like we are free and we are here to be happy. And uh, either if you want to have a, a change now in your life or later, you can, you can do it. But the, the challenge is about the decision and how we do it. So mm -hmm. I don't think that age is the problem. It's okay. what it is um, around the career transition piece of it. So, of course, like how um, you are, like your mental health, how is that going? How is the rest of your life? How your work, like your life in general, the balance of your life? Because sometimes we do the mistake of thinking that career is only what it is like our life is only career so i want to have a, a career transition and it's going to solve all my problems all yeah or yeah. it's going to be like, the solution for all my issues you want exactly yeah you want and want yeah. exactly and doesn't matter if you are 18 if you're not, if you're 21 <laughs> or 21 to every to everyone exactly right? that's the rule of a career, of a change like it's the, the challenge that is over there how you're going to make it and who you are going to ask for to support you how you are going to do it because if you forget about all the rest of your life and just focus on this this is going to be the this is this it's going to be like that another area will exactly. suffer exactly right then you fix exactly. one area but then you are with problem in other areas yeah, yeah. that's yeah. very interesting this, because when i talk to clients and every everyone has the standards that's human nature like we think that our case is more complicated right but, but from the outside mm -hmm. it's funny because like if people just graduated and they don't have enough experience they're like oh julian it's gonna be uh, hard to find a job because i'm you know i don't have experience so nobody will want to hire me so it's very complicated my case is very complicated and then you talk to the one who has 10 years experience oh you know what's going to be very complicated because people will think that I'm, i'm stuck in that sector in that area they will think i'm not flexible enough to start a new career so they won't give me chance and then when you are in your 50s or oh, they think i'm too old already i should have done this so everyone think that their age is the worst to make the career transition yeah. but as you said it's yeah. not about that it's not about the age no. itself not right. at all not at all <laughs> it is a challenge for everyone because it's a change like in yeah. change and it's like we are getting out from our comfort zone so that means stress so it's how we handle yeah. and how we keep the all the rest in balance and yeah so that i would say that has nothing to do with age But one thing that I wanted to mention as well, Ju, is that all those things that we say to ourselves, like, oh, because I'm 50, you know, I can't change my career. I can't make a move. This is all about, like, um, false beliefs. 
you know, it's kind of a limitating beliefs mm -hmm. that we just believe. It's like lies that we decided to believe and yeah. that make us to not act towards our dreams. And all of us have those sometimes, especially if we are not aware or if we mm -hmm. are not present for those things. So, and that's why as well, as well, we um, have a dream sometimes of a career uh, when we are like 18 and we just don't have the courage at that age to make the move and we carry on until <laughs> our forties and we say, Oh, I was too young regretting, to have a right? Yeah. 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 I and haven't done that regretting. before because I thought that I couldn't and now I can't as well. So, I mean, it's all about the decision. You can make a yeah. career by change at any yeah. time. As long, there is as a price. As you want. There is a price. Yeah, there, there is, is a, a price, price you pay if you decide to change. There is a price you pay if you pay if you decide not to change. Remain That's in it. a career that you're not happy. There is a price that you're paying. As That's well as true. making the change, there is a price that you're playing. As I said at the beginning, I think that we don't speak about career transition enough there is this big taboo That's around true. it we feel ashamed we feel it's wrong or we feel that yeah. okay if i decide i want to change it i'm not i'm not allowed to have doubts to have fears because i made the decision already right so i have to be strong and i cannot show vulnerability i cannot show that i have doubts no so again i think we need to do 20 more lives about it because it's not <laughs> yeah it's yeah. not enough, you know. But anyway, yeah. we are doing our part. We are planting a small seed, it. and everybody That's who is it. watching here hopefully will, you know, get some fresh new ideas about the career transition and make our peace with that. Talking about That's it, um, I want to pick your experience working on it to add even more value to whoever is watching us. And I want to be very specific, like very practical here, because you're talking, yeah, career transition, you can ask for professional help, yeah, and then people are like, so what is that? What is this professional help you're talking about? What do you do with your clients? You know, if someone like, okay, I like you, I decide to work. If so, can you be like very specific and pick up one, just one, because you mm -hmm. won't have time for more, but one kind of exercise, practical stuff, no theory, practical activity, practical exercise that you do with your clients who are going through a career transition process, one exercise or technique or mm -hmm. activity mm -hmm. that you do. Okay. okay. Right. And I would, I would say something very simple, guys, but it's very powerful because, um, uh, and also this is based in most of the cases that comes to me because a lot of, like, the people that I work with is mostly people that are not sure. They want to change in their career, but they are not sure where to go or where, what to do. And it's that sense of, I'm not happy where I am, but I don't know what's next. Yeah. Um, Classic. So the exercise, exactly. And this is like a pain, you know? I mean, like, I'm not here to say that it, it's okay to feel this way. Like, I think it's very painful for those who go through those, through this moment. And it is a moment. It doesn't need to be this way forever. But what I like to work with then, uh, like, as, as soon as we have the opportunity, is to put them to dream. I ask the question, okay, you don't know what you would like to do. But let's have this opportunity to imagine your dream job. How would that be like? Like, what would you like to be doing? Like, if you wouldn't, like, if money wouldn't be a problem and you could create something completely new that doesn't exist, what would be? What is this, like, how it is your routine? Who is around you? Where is that? What can you see from your window? Are you in a window in an office or outside the office? And it's very interesting what we learn from actually having the opportunity to just dream. A lot of people comes, a lot of people know, a lot of things comes out, you know, oh, I would like actually this and that and this and that. Um, and it's, you know, I would say just get a piece of paper, like white paper, a pen or something like this and imagine if I yeah. don't know what I want next. And if my life is not nice, what would I like to, what it is that I want? What, would, what do you think that would be an ideal world or a dream job? And just be free, you know, put some nice song or, you know, in the background, just imagine every detail that you can possibly think. And usually I talk about it with them to see if there is anything missing and how we can bring this dream job to reality. Mm-hmm. And that's where we start working and kind of filling the gaps, 
you know yeah. do you need a degree do you need experience do you need uh, to travel back to reality is... right we dream first yeah. and then we are back to reality to build up the step by step to That's get it. it because if we stay That's in the it. dream it won't come true it's not only about oh, i'm visualizing the job i want and then i'm on the couch watching netflix and waiting for it to happen No, no. <laughs> That's not how it works. But dreaming is important. And um I was talking to someone, I don't recall who, but the person said, "I'm surprised with uh how many people stopped dreaming." It's like a lot of us don't really know what motivates us, what put us on fire, what really, you know, bring us a, a smile to our face because we're so much in the automatic mode that we never totally. I mean, I think I think um as adults as as kids we are asked this question what do you want to do when you grow up and then you have like yeah. i had a lot of um it was called creative notebook in my school it's a brilliant mm-hmm. idea i don't know if many schools do that but it was a, a a a new notebook every year for you to draw to try to do anything there was no topic Fantastic. specific you know it was just for creation i loved it i used more than one for uh for ear you know i was it was my creative fast, moment yeah. but as i do yeah. we stop doing that we are just following the patterns and and what we were told so we lose this capacity yeah. of dreaming so sometimes it's clear that this reality what i'm living now i'm not happy with but i don't know what i want so it's a very hard exercise actually i also do that like writing a letter to yourself in 10 years or writing your perfect job description write it mm. what exactly do you want to do which kind of test which yeah. which kind of people yeah. you want to talk to which responsibilities which kind of environment so it's exactly what you were saying but it's very exactly. difficult because we as adults we are not asked to dream we are asked to execute to do things to yeah. bring money home to have stability to uh you know don't make things complicated life is already too complicated so just get a job and that's it so dreaming about it is already challenging for <laughs> a lot of us so it's a, it's a very nice yeah. exercise yeah yeah and it's 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 simple but it's that kind of a tool dream it's a kind of a tool that is always there it's all about mm-hmm. like okay opening that draw um and just putting out putting that that out and it's interesting that you mentioned you that when we are a kid we have this habit more present of dreaming and um being more cre- more aligned with creativity and everything and the thing is that this child is this kid is inside us and being suffocated by you know this thing of what i adult I, life. i was meant to do like adult, adult life, life. Come on. Yeah. yeah we are all like we all have child inside us like we need to give it a time and the opportunity to, to let it out and i do believe that this thing of a career and purpose in life it's very much connected with our inner child as well because when we are we were a kid we already kind of had a sense of what we wanted or we were already doing even unconsciously things that we wanted to do like in our mm-hmm. future so i also have this kind of exercise sometimes when we need to unblock some some inspiration about what i would like to do in my life what it is my purpose and purpose in life and and all those things so i would just kind of emphasize dream guys just you know allow yourself to dream and to talk about your dreams and start from it if you don't know where to go yeah yeah dreaming yeah it's almost a luxurious stuff to do nowadays right as adults we just to 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 do things and then yeah. yeah dreaming is for younger people or whatever i don't have time for that i i i you know waste my time with that but yeah the, the, it's the key for a lot of things That's actually it. yeah yeah because if we don't know what we want how we are going to build it how, what yeah. is the where how is, do you know if you're going is, to the right path if you don't know where yeah. you're going to right that's another yeah. thing if, yeah everything that is materialized here it's because was created before yeah. in our head somehow so everything yeah. you never here, get you never get here. anything that you cannot talk about that you don't know that that's it exists it. and all of that maybe the the job you're dreaming about it already oh, that happens with me i was saying and i i, I remember some real examples like people say i want to work with this and this of that like, okay so the name of this job in english or in the spanish whatever is it Oh so there is a job for that was like, yeah there is a job that it do it oh my god as i'm so happy so maybe you have the pieces but you don't know that there is a job that exactly puts all those things together you know exactly. so maybe it's like this close to you but you don't know so it doesn't exist for you until yeah. someone okay yeah. are you searching for jobs named 
this. <gasps> and then you start to, that's true. The job description is exactly what I want to do. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. But you didn't know, so you're not searching for that. That thing exists already, but you didn't know that the job title, as simple as that. Because <laughs> when we change yeah. countries, that happens also, right? How, how is my job named in English? Or in Spanish, how do they call what I do? That's another thing mm -hmm. that you need to figure True. out, you know, because if you're looking True. for the wrong name, you're going to find the wrong stuff. So yeah. as simple as finding the name, it makes, yeah, I just remember, That's, like speaking about it, I remember real yeah. cases yeah. that happened. And even life. you, and sometimes we need to create our jobs because, oh, that, you know, yeah. we don't That's find all that out there. We just create. I created yeah. my own job because I didn't find my job online. <laughs> me, me too. I created my own job. Yeah. We put the pieces <laughs> and then we are That's here it. creating, reinventing. Exactly. There is one more question. Uh, uh, how many chains are we allowed to make in life and how to make sense of it? So uh, I think it's change, career change, right? So how many times can I change my career? One is good enough. Two, maximum three. More than four is already too much, or there is no, <laughs> no number. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think. Um, okay, let, let me start with that. Um, go for it. I think as far as far as you are intentional and it makes sense to you, the number is not the most important thing. If you're just changing everything months because you don't know what to do and you're just testing out. So now I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do that. That's not um, something that you're being strategic about it. You are wasting your time and your energy and you are creating a bad reputation about yourself because if you're six months in one area, then six months completely. And then another six months that's being lost. And I think the being lost doesn't make any sense out of it. But if you are going towards the dream, right? Towards what you want. Maybe on the way, you are gonna, maybe it's not like that. It's like, you know, so you know what? I worked at that company and all that. So I liked some things, but I didn't like the environment. It was too formal. So I changed because I figured out on the process that I want a more informal environment. Yeah, but then it was two young people. I want to work more with senior people because I can learn more. So this movement i think it is healthy and then it's not even about numbers anymore because it, it's still the path it's still the yeah. same change you, yeah. know? you just you change yourself your uh needs your expectations and all of that and also it's like what i wanted when i was 23 i think when i graduated as a psychologist 23 i think i wanted some things in my life my, my priorities my expectations my idea of being a successful woman i remember like dressing a suit and high heels and all of that working as hr monitor in a company i don't even have high heels anymore you know i dress super informal i don't want to be in a company so the dreams i had 20 years ago they're not the same one as now so if i try to be that corporate suit high heels i'm gonna hurt my my foot and i don't want to do that so it makes sense to Not change because I, yeah my mind and my heart and everything so my, my act, the current plan so i don't know if it's a matter of number but um, i think the intention has to be there because if we keep jumping without a plan then this is being lost and it's definitely going to go yeah. against you from the outside because people want and they say it won't make any sense but mainly from the inside because you're wasting your energy that you could use like yeah. this, but not because that's too much. That's yeah. my input. Yeah, but I would, I would just compliment you, uh, you in terms of that is that sometimes we are lost. Yeah, that's sometimes true. Sometimes we are lost. What to do if we are trying to find our path and sometimes can happen. Like we are trying our best to find our focus and we are not getting there. They Sometimes do. we are lost and this is part of the thing. So just don't, don't blame yourself. Don't, be, don't feel guilt about it. Just think, uh, and take into consideration what, what you said. Okay, I am lost. How can I actually find a focus? So just to refocus to find then a uh, direction. But it's okay. Sometimes we do like not even consciously that we are jumping from one place to the other. But, yeah. you know, once you realize, try to find the focus as long <laughs> as you can. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, Thank you. 